Hey, this is Alex Piak, and welcome to the Dominant Agent Podcast, the place where real estate agents and brokers come to learn directly from the top agents, coaches, trainers, and industry influencers on how to build profitable, scalable, and enjoyable businesses by becoming the dominant agent in their market so they can live life on their terms. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Dominant Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Piak. As many of you guys know, we are committed to helping agents build a profitable, scalable, and enjoyable business by getting you access to the absolute best agents, coaches, trainers, and influencers in the industry. And our guest today fits all of that mold. Today, we're going to be talking with Gogo. And Gogo, is it pronounced Bethke? Yeah, yeah, good job. All right, awesome. Now, Gogo came to the US in 2003 to build her American dream and literally by the process of elimination, fell into real estate. After trying data entry in a warehouse, being a sales rep in a jewelry store, a restaurant food safety auditor, a stay-at-home mom, and even a waitress. Now, shortly after getting her real estate license, reality really kicked her in the ass. She realized that over 80% of realtors don't make it through their first year in real estate. And Gogo refused to be part of the 80%, but she was broke, had no sphere of influence, no experience, and barely spoke English. With just $6 to her name, she didn't have many resources available. The one thing she did have was Facebook, and that's really where she got started. She created Gogo's Real Estate, and her career started from there. Now, it took a few years to get into the rhythm of things, but with the power of social media, she sold over $60 million in residential real estate. By sharing snippets into her everyday life as an agent, including the good, the bad, and the ugly, she's attracted tens of thousands of followers in real estate, and in her, her real estate community has earned the nickname, the social media queen. Now, because of her social media influence and following, she's been asked to speak at different real estate events to teach realtors how to build a brand and become their own lead generating magnet. She's also built a social media boot camp for realtors to be able to help thousands of agents at the same time. And you can find more of that information at gogosbootcamp.com. Her goal is to help as many agents as possible make a name for themselves in this cutthroat industry. As of today, she's got a team of over 106 agents and growing nationwide. Gogo, wow. welcome to the Dominant Agent Podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I need to update you on that one because those numbers are changed too. We are now at 150. Wow, that is massive growth. And we'll get into that today. Um, I'm super excited to have you on. Um, Gogo, you were introduced to me by a mutual friend, uh, John and Holly Kitchens. They had amazing things to say about you and kind of shared with me your backstory. I've seen some of your interviews. So really excited to bring that to the community and then share with them what's really working now. I mean, social media is your thing, Instagram, Facebook. So we're definitely going to get into the how to's today. And I know you've got a boot camp where you're helping agents implement these strategies. So I'm super excited. Is there anything else we should know about you before we get started? Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I guess you said that I'm a mom of two boys. I, I didn't get into real estate with the idea that I, I never wanted to have a massive mega team. That was not the goal. The goal was to make extra money, have extra money for spring break and go home to Romania every summer, be able to afford that and be able to afford taking six weeks off every single summer. And um, so taking all that in consideration, it's where we are today. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved hearing in one of your interviews more about the quality of life, right? It wasn't just trading money for time. You were you started with the quality of life in mind and have built your business around that. Let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's where a lot of real estate agents, unfortunately, uh, they lose, they, they get into real estate because they think they're getting flexibility. They think they're going to be able to do things on their terms. And then next thing they know, they're working seven days a week, 10 hours a day. They're missing their kids' games. And even if they're there, they're not present, right? They're glued to their cell phone. Yeah. And, and it is hard. I mean, it's hard to get into the mindset of, hold on a minute, it's six o'clock, I'm turning my phone off. Um, even now my husband is also a full-time realtor, so now he gets it. But prior to that, we used to have arguments. I would be on the couch and my phone rings. And he's like, dude, it's 7.48 at night. Like, let it ring. There's no emergency in real estate. If, if the house is on fire, call 911. Don't call your realtor. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
But at the same time, I would look at him and be like, it could be a $13,000 phone call. Do you want me to take it? Because if I don't take it, another realtor will. That's true. So it is kind of that borderline in between. If you don't want to do that, then you have to have the systems in place. Uh, somebody else on the, on the team will take the call. But yeah. should go to voicemail. Absolutely. Yeah. No systems are huge, especially I think the more systems and the more processes you have in place, the work-life balance gets easier. Yeah. Right. And there's, and I'm not a believer in balance. I don't think there's ever the perfect balance. You got to make it work for you right early in your career. The balance is going to be heavy on busting your ass to become successful. Yeah. When you're successful, the balance can shift because you'll have a brand, you'll start to attract people, they'll be inbound more I than chasing. I just made a post about this today on my Instagram talking about how weird it is that I have empty spots on my calendar. Like I used to be scheduled down to the hour and don't get me wrong, I can still show you my calendar, it's not much better. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it's not much better, yeah, but- that's jam packed. <laughs> but it's getting better. Like there are spots now on my calendar that I'm not scheduled for something. And for a while, that was weird. I was like, oh, like, are, are we making money? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. am I not scheduled because I don't have work? Or am I not scheduled because we have systems in place? Because I'm working smarter, not harder. Because I am now eliminating the things that don't serve a purpose. Because it's hard to say no in this industry. It's hard to say, no, I'm not going to jump on your podcast. Or no, I, it's, if it's not serving me good or it's not taking me where I'm heading, then you have to learn to say no. Otherwise, you're going to fill your calendar with nonsense and busy is not progress busy is just busy busy doesn't generate money busy just fills your calendar yeah i agree a thousand percent there there's a difference between being busy and being productive mm -hmm. you know i always call them profit producing activities like if 70 percent of your day is in a profit producing activity you're probably not reaching your goals yeah you're probably going home feeling exhausted you know, you got a lot of the checks in the boxes, but at the end of the day, those checks weren't the things that really move your business forward. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's definitely. hard. Like my husband is in his first year and I've been there, you know what I mean? And, and even though we are married and we work together and all that, I still have to allow him to kind of just go through that, that learning curve and, and figuring out his own way. And uh, like he got to me a couple of days ago, he's like, Hey, I want to sponsor the bass fishing high school team. And I said, okay. 250 bucks. How are you going to make back that $250? Because last I checked, I can't recall a high schooler that bought a house from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how are you going to make back the 250? Or is there a chance for you to present something to the parents of those high schoolers? Well, they're going to print my logo on the back of their shirts. I said, okay, Dwayne, when was the last time you bought something because you saw the logo on the back of someone's shirt? hundred percent. Yeah. Is there a phone number under the logo? Can they actually dial you or how is someone going to research a logo on Google to find out who's behind their company to find out like you're not going to go into that much detail. You know, no. I mean, you want to find somebody, you want instant gratification. You want that phone number right there, push up a button dial. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. That is a great mindset too. Like you got to think of the monetization strategy behind all of the investments you make in real estate. Yeah, of course, um, you want to sponsor the high school. If you want to just throw 250 bucks to the high school bass fishing team because you want to help them, that's different. But if you're doing it because you want to get back clients, you want that $250 to turn into a commission or two, then there has to be a way for you to turn that into a commission. Putting a logo in the back of a t-shirt with no cell phone number, no name for the company, no uh, call to action, it's not going to make your $250 back. Yeah. So that's a great distinction. Is this marketing or is this a donation? And if it's a donation, expect nothing in return. If you're donating because you love the cause, go ahead and donate your $250. But if you're using it for marketing, you have to act as the end consumer and figure out, would I call you based on that logo on the back of a t-shirt? Yeah, that's would great. Would I for a realtor or what you do for a living? 100%. So that's already huge nugget in the first couple of minutes, right? That distinction of, because I think people do, right? They put their, they put their logo on everything and they think that they're marketing, but not everything is marketing unless there's a call to action, a way to get contact with you, right? An actual value to the consumer in exchange for becoming a lead in your business. So 
Yeah, if they are able to get in front of those people, and, and of course not in front of the high school students, because we are talking 10 years before they buy a house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but talking to their parents, if there are a way to do a spaghetti dinner that you can sponsor where the parents are invited, and then you can talk to them. You know, that, yeah. I would love the opportunity any day. I sponsor the team anytime, but for you to print my logo in the back of a t-shirt, not interested. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good distinction. So it's, let's kind of go back to when you got into real estate. Obviously, you said it took you a little bit to get into the rhythm a couple of years to oh, figure yeah. things out. <laughs> so because there might be people listening right now that are in that situation. And to be honest with you, it's not uncommon to have a realtor who've been in the business for five, six, seven, ten 10 years who are still there. Every year is the same year in repeat, right? It's like Groundhog Day. It's the same year. Like there's no growth, it's kind of stagnant. So let's talk about where you were and then what was really the tipping point for you to where you started to get the breakthroughs in growth? Um, so a lot of events and books and kind of like the self-education is what turned my life around. Um, but talking about having the same year over and over again, that's a description of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Just because now it's two, 2020 and not 2019, just because you're doing the same thing, that doesn't, it's going to get you the same results. If anything, it might get you worse results because we evolve, technology evolves. So by you doing things that worked in 2019, there's no guarantee that it's going to work in 2020. So you have to evolve constantly and change it up. And I also feel like this industry is probably, granted I haven't worked in many others recently, but I feel like out of all business industries, we, our ways of how we do business and, and the systems we have to use in order to stay on top of things are changing constantly. Like constantly. Like all, I, feel, I feel like my office manager, Chrissy, that's all she does is build a system and we use it for two months. And next thing you know, we need to build a whole new automated drip campaign because it doesn't apply anymore. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think evolution is, it, in, in this case, of le- teaching yourself of where you want to go, um, shadowing people that are already walking the walk. I know in order to be an entrepreneur and a salesperson, especially, you have to have a healthy ego. But it also gets in the way at many times. So if I can teach you one thing, go and knock on every person's door who's walking the walk where you want to be and ask him, can I take you off for coffee? Can I pick your brain in front of me on it? How did you get to where you at? What was the lesson that took you the longest to learn? You know, like my lesson that took me the longest to learn is you have to spend money to make money. I come from communism. I grew up without money. And I also come from an era where, or in, in a culture where if you have the money, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. We don't do credit cards and things like that. So for me, if I can do it for free, if I can do social media for free, then why would I throw money at it? And that was the hardest point is because you get to, with money, you get to buy things that you can't reach organically. So that's an investment that you're investing into yourself. Now, granted, still most of my business, probably I would say 85% of my business is organic. Um, there's 15% where we throw some money at marketing, but it is almost against my religion to do it. Like I have to force myself to do it, but I know that it, it is, we are heading into the right direction. So you have to figure out where you first is what is your goal? Also, the second best thing I learned is the, the mind power, the power of intention to say it out loud of what you want from this year. And then the universe listen. And it's like your internal GPS. As long as you know where you're going, your internal GPS will show you how to get there. But if you don't say it out loud and you don't claim what you want, you can't get it. So I remember the very first year I got a coach and she said, how much money you want to make this year? And I was like, what do you mean? Like I never worked that way. I always just work, work, work and hope that, you know, I'm going to make money this year. Well, a dollar is money. You're going to make a dollar. You know, so if you're not intentional about that, so the very first time I declared that I am going to make $150,000 this year and I said it out loud, it's not easy to tell the world what you want to make because now you're going to be held responsible. In the end of the year, they're going to ask you, did you make 150? Accountability. Yeah. And guess what? Guess what? I closed that year. The very first time I let the world know how much I want to make by what date. It's also important, not just how much, but by when. You have to put an end date to it. So I said by December 31st, this this was probably in 2015, I would say. I said I want to make $150,000. That's awesome. And you probably nailed it. 154. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It is crazy. Is the power of intention or the, or, the, or the mind power is absolutely insanity. If you call it, if you can imagine it, if you can call it, you can have it. 
Let yeah. I love that. It, it, being intentional. That is huge. You know, we, we always teach when we sh- teach real estate agents, how to, how to set their goals, how to make your goals smart, right? So they're specific. Uh, yeah. They have a time frame. They're measurable because what's not measured can't be improved. So I love all that. But the accountability is huge, right? Because once you put it out there, you almost feel like you'll let people down or you'll be judged if you don't do it. Yeah. And the cool part was when she said, okay, how much money do you want to make? And I said, 150. She said, okay, let's figure out how we're going to get there. What's your average price range? And I said, at that time, it was about 250. So she said, okay, what's your cut? And I said, you know, at that time it was 30%. So we did the math. Okay, how many transactions at 250 do I have to do? Average commission uh, 7,500 minus the 30%. You know, how many transactions do I have to do to reach that 150? Then we divided by 12 months. How many do I have to do in a month? You know, or what if I did a million dollar transaction? That means, okay, I have a couple options. I can take the rest of the month off because I reached my goal. Or I can add on and maybe I'll just reach above and beyond my 150. Yeah. But at least I know I have to do four transactions a month or whatever the numbers came out at in order to reach that goal. So if you know what your end goal is, then you can work it back. What's your average price range? How many months in a year? What's your cut? What's your cap? At what point do you cap? How many transactions do you have to do at that 30% off or 20% off? And after that, hopefully they cap because <laughs> not many agents do. Right. So if any of you are listening that you are with a brokerage and you cannot cap, you run. And you run fast. I'm not saying join the brokerage I'm at, but I'm just saying join any that you have an option to cap. Because if you don't, there's no reason for you to be a top producing agent. There's no reason for you to hustle because somebody is going to make a hefty chunk on your commission and that money should be in your bank account, not theirs. No offense to all the brokers out there. Yeah, no, right. I mean, I owned a franchise. So at, um, I bought a Remax franchise at the age of 22. So I was one of the youngest free, uh, Remax franchise owners in, in the company's history at that time. And um, I remember paying in, you know, we had a fee as the broker owner. And uh, after my five years was up, I was like, man, the bigger and the stronger and the more deals we do, the more money they make. There's never an end, right? There's never the period where now the financial reward and the windfall comes back to us. They're yeah. always getting their piece. So I was just talking uh, to somebody who was like, well, yeah, no, I cap. I, it's a 95.5. I'm like, no, you don't cap because you always pay a 5%. She's like, well, yeah, but it's only like 5%. I said, okay, how many transactions did you last year? 90. What's the average price range? 300,000. Average commission, 9,000. 9, 5% is 450 bucks times $90. So if you don't need that money, because clearly you don't, yeah, because it's only 5%, then just send it over to me. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. You can put that to good use for sure. So <laughs> in, you want a very nice vacation. Yeah, absolutely. So what were some of the big challenges you had early on? So for me, and it might be a little different. I'm originally from Romania. I moved here in 2003 when I was 21 years old. I simply did not know a single human being in this country. Barely spoke English. Like I learned British English to start with. So when I moved here, I barely spoke it and then slang was really, really hard. So not only I don't have the college friends, the childhood friends, the, you know, nobody. Like I literally knew nobody in this country and I got this great idea of being sales. So with no sphere of influence and lack of English and lack of education and lack of experience, it was kind of harder for me um, to start. And that's how we got to social media in the first place because I had to, and I was broke on top of it. So I had to be able to get to somehow to make a name for myself for strangers to know about me. And that's how social media started for me. But it is an awesome platform, guys, to use it for what I call shameless self-promotion. Because in the end of the day, it's the faster you learn that you're not selling real estate, you're selling your services the faster you're going to have success if that's what you want to do with social media, if you want to build a brand. If all you do is posting homes that you sold or listed, any, you know, it's not going to work because it's not going to catch people's attention. But if you can entertain them, so sad with the all sides of the real estate industry of what it takes to be a realtor, then they will follow you. And when they need you seven to 10 years from now, because people move in average around that time, seven, every seven to 10 years, then they will call you. Yeah. So there, there's, there's a big, uh, there's another big distinction in there. I hope everybody picked up. So that's really, really important with the social media part uh, because, you know, social media, everything is on a mobile phone today, right? So if you can apply some of your efforts to social media, you can literally become a celebrity agent in your market, right? With, for pennies. I mean, most, most agents had to go, 
Yeah, or free. I mean, most people, you know, they're going to buy TV commercials and they're spending 10, 15, 20,000 a month. Well, getting into real estate, that's probably not doable for most people. They don't have those resources. But leveraging social media, inexpensive, free, and you could build this platform and make you look like the go-to agent, the celebrity agent, the advisor, the authority in your market. So let's talk about how you, so you obviously saw social media because of the lack of resources. It was your resource. What yep. did you do in the beginning to kind of get things rolling? What were you well, posting? Yeah, I soon realized I'm like, hold on a minute. I don't have listings. <laughs> I don't have experience. I don't know what the heck is going on. Like I'm winging this, uh, you know, day after day. And I, I literally just realized, okay, if you want to do social media, you have to be honest. You have to say the truth. So then originally I showed my hustle. I showed that, hey, guys, this is what I learned today. I had no idea. When I got into real estate, I personally thought that, you know, the, the 40, 50, 90,000 dollar homes are going to be paid cash and then the 500,000 dollar homes are going to be mortgage come to find out is the total way around. You know, the very, very expensive home people are like, sure, I'll just cut a check. How much? And then the 90,000 dollar home, the two of them can barely qualify for a mortgage. You know what I mean? So I would just post things that I learned that day. And by sharing what you're learning, it's going to make you the expert because they see A, that you're not giving up, that you're hustling. B, that you are trying to become the best in the industry by constantly educating yourself and going to events and sitting open houses and shadowing agents and you know that kind of stuff. And then eventually you, those things start rolling in. People start reaching out to you and, hey, I want to buy a condo or I need to rent or my grandma's you know, downsizing into a rent style home. Can you help her? Like, you know, those things start coming in and then you start posting your listings and lives at open houses and the events that you're going to go to and all the stuff. So you just kind of like a snowball effect. It grows with you. Mm, that's greatness right there. Yeah. So for those people who are listening right now, obviously your first suggestion is, you know, just kind of show them behind the scenes, like what it is to be a hustler in real estate. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, because I think so many agents, they, they want to put out this like fake persona, right? Like, but being vulnerable and letting people know like, Hey, this is really what happens, right? You know, you, you get a bad home inspection and, and you go and you do a live and you're venting your frustration. Like people consume that, right? That's, that's their entertainment. And we have to understand Facebook, Instagram, those are entertainment and engagement type platforms, right? So you need to do things that engage people, entertain them. So letting them know how to sell a house, how to get it ready, what to avoid, the pitfalls, doing tours of open houses, like that's what people are looking for. Yeah, and funny things you find at listings and, and you know, like sometimes you have that asshole agent and the other line of the phone and you're like, okay, I'm gonna Google you. Like, are you an asshole because you've been in the industry forever and you're bitter? Or are you an asshole because you're brand new and you don't want me to figure it out? So you're acting like you have it all figured out. And, you know, there's apps for that. So pretty much anything that it takes to be a realtor, just share it. To share and the more it. entertaining it is, the more they're going to follow you. So did you have any reluctance? Because uh, you do, you know, you, you had mentioned going live. Did you have any reluctance getting on camera? Oh, I don't, I don't know if I did, to be honest with you. Like, it's almost like that ostrich situation, like you put your head in the sand and you act like they're not there. So because I don't see the crowd, even though not, my imprints are over a million now a month, I reach over a million accounts a month, I guess, but I don't see them. You know what I mean? So then it, it's almost like it doesn't exist. It's almost like I'm alone talking to this camera. So it's totally different than getting on stage. Now I also do public speaking now, and because I have an accent, I feel like it's a little bit easier for me because if I say something stupid, they're just going to blame it on my accent instead of my <laughs> intelligence. You know what I mean? So maybe I have that going for me. I'll be honest with you on that one. Um, but being in front of camera, if there's not somebody holding it, but I'll be honest with you though, very first ad when I, when I was doing commercials, like official commercials, for like I also used to have a commercial at the local movie theater, um, which was huge, uh, did very, very well here locally. It, it, kind of, it definitely helped building that local brand and presence. But there was a videographer behind the camera. Now, that video we had to shoot at least freaking 76 times. <laughs> and I had the worst migraine by the end of the day. I couldn't even eat all day. I was shaking from over-caffeinated. You know, it's different when somebody's behind the camera versus you just doing monologues. And that's the cool part with social media is that you're the videographer and the subject. Nobody's behind you. Nobody's watching you, even though thousands of people are going to see it. You're not right there making facial expressions and rolling their eyes. You have no idea what, right. how they feel on the other end. Yeah, so that, 
Yeah, I hope everybody heard that because I hear this all the time. I'm not good in camera. Well, listen, the truth of the matter is, and by the way, most of the people probably don't have tens of thousands of followers, right? They probably have a couple of past clients and their family members. But if you're going live, maybe one, two people are actually going to jump on while you're doing your live. So the truth of the matter is, if you completely suck and screw it up, delete it. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. But you know also, what? don't go for perfection because perfection does not sell. No. The no, that's huge. The goofier images I put up there or the sillier things I share are the ones that actually have the most interaction. Because people want to see your real side. None of us are perfect. There isn't such a thing. Yeah, guys, I hope you're taking notes. Imperfection is, first of all, it's more believable, right? Yeah. You don't have to go get yourself dolled up to get on camera. I did a uh, Facebook Live um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have my son in the morning. I take him to school. So you know how it is with kids. Like I'm just trying to get in the shower, get him to school, and then start my day without being late. So I've got him set up in the bedroom. He's eating his Cheerios. He's watching cars. And somebody had asked me a question, so I did a Facebook Live. Now my hair is a complete disaster. Like, you know, I'm exhausted from waking up at four o'clock in the morning with a kid. It's the best post ever. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I'm not I, I don't know if you knew I lost my front tooth. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's cr Now, <laughs> people who are listening don't know what just happened. But well, Gogo literally can pop out her front tooth. I can't. I can't. So That's like her special my, talent. It is. I'm so talented. I have all kinds of special <laughs> talent. Uh, so I lost my front tooth in a sandwich. And as they did the x-ray, figured out I don't have bone there. So now it's going to take seven months before I can have an implant and a tooth on it and yada, yada. But by showing, like I shoot videos in the morning with my morning coffee, I have no makeup on. My hair is not done and my tooth is not in my mouth. It's in my pocket. <laughs> so I there's no excuses for anybody. There's no excuses. But like see, people and people love it. They're like, I love that you can show your real side. Like we all have downsides. Like we all have real estate is a roller coaster. You know, not every month is amazing. Not every client is walking the park. Some of them are walking Jurassic Park. And you know, not every day is peachy and fluffy and sunny and 75. Yeah, no, that's huge. Yeah, you know, just being real, um, even when it comes to running ads. You know, I'll use more native real images. Like I don't do the professional images. I don't do photo stock. Like literally I can be images are like, yeah, it's like, you know, me cross-eyed or yeah. you know, I mean, it's just whatever silly things that it will catch your attention. They will actually read what you are about to say. Yeah. Versus the perfect photo, they're just going to cruise through it. Yep. I, I love that. So right now, are you primarily like, if you were to describe your business, are you primarily buyer, seller, 50, 50? Yeah. So my business switch originally I did a hundred percent of buy side for probably the first two, three years of my business. That's where I felt comfortable. I really just was scared from sellers. And then that went to 50, 50. And now I am personally, I would say probably almost a hundred percent listing. Um, but my husband is also a full-time realtor now. And we have a local team of 40, some agency in the state of Michigan and 150 some nationwide. Um, so I would say it's a, it's a good mixture. My husband pretty much does it all buyers, sellers, rentals, new construction, you name it. Awesome. Yeah. I think a lot of agents do the same thing, right? You get into real estate for some reason, we have a mental block about listings. So we all usually did kind of go to the buy side and then eventually, you know, we all try to get to be the listing side. So talk to us a little bit about what was your decision to be more on the listing side? You know, what was the advantages to focusing on listing? I mean, they say you list, you last. You know, because you can also double dip that. You listed it, you might have the buyer. You can't really, I mean, even on buy side, I guess you can double dip because they may have to sell. And that's probably, I was probably forced into the listing side, to be honest with you, because I was scared of it. I was not ready to reduce my commission or even have that conversation. I felt like on the buy side, they never ask you about your commission because they're not paying it. What do they care? You know what I mean? And I know I can do a, a, an amazing job. So it was just never, I was just go bam, 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 one after the other, get it done. Um, and then it, it gets to the point where you are in the business, then you got start getting referrals. If you do a good business, they start you know, the, the house they bought with you seven years ago, they outgrown it. Now they have a family of three kids and two dogs. Now they need to upsize or kids moved out of college. Now they need to downsize. So your own clientele starts wanting to list with you. And like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to figure this out. And that's pretty much it. And I just switched over now. Like yesterday, I got a text message from a client that I sold her house in, I think two, three years ago. She's like, okay, need to sell. Can you come over Saturday? I'm like, yep. That's the best part. 
Yeah. Well, you're also not competing, right? They already know, like, and trust you. You've already done a good job. So that's, I think ultimately where a lot of people want to get to is to where they get the inbound attraction and past clients coming back to them. What would you say are the three things working right now that are producing results sales? So all of my business comes from social media. I've never bought a Zillow lead. Um, so I have to put social media very, very high up. Then sphere of influence and referral businesses, the other two. So what are you doing? Uh, we'll get into social media in a second. What are you doing to cultivate that, that, that repeat business? Do you have any programs or systems that you're doing to stay in touch with past clients? Like how do you make sure they don't forget who you are when they are ready to sell? Yeah. So all, also my, all my clients follow me pretty much because that's how they found me in the first place. So the way I look at social media, it's like marketing, like they're not going to read every post that you make, they're not going to comment, they're not, they may not even pay attention, but just when they are cruising with one eye open at the end of the day, because people spend four hours in average a day on different platforms of social media. So just by seeing that you posted something, even though they don't look at it, they are constantly reminded that you're Google and that's what you do for a living, you're a realtor. So you, they don't have a chance to forget that what you do for a living. So even though that social media, even my super influence past clients, they all got to stay in touch with that. Now, we also have systems in places. When I wasn't this busy, um, I was able to take them out for lunches um, on their anniversary dates uh, for when they bought a home or their birthdays. So when you close, uh, we have a list what's called a favorites list. Make sure that you, you, all your clients fill that out. If you want a copy of that, reach out to me on Instagram and I'll send it to you. So the favorites list is pretty much just asking them their names, their spouses' names, where they work, their phone numbers, email addresses for both of them, their anniversary date for the wedding, their children, their names, um, if they have any allergies. Because if I was to bring them a cake, I want to make sure if they're allergic to nuts and it's not, you know, doesn't have nuts in it. I ask them their favorite last restaurant locally. Um, so if you're giving them a gift card for something or I invited them out for dinner, I know or they want to meet at the steakhouse or they would love sushi. And, and that's pretty much it. Then we plug all that into the system. And then like even today, this morning, I woke up, I got like 90 some notifications for past clients to follow up with them for whatever reason, the system actually dumped all, <laughs> uh, all 90 of them on the same day. So I looked at Christy, I'm like, Christy, I can't follow up with 90 people <laughs> in one day. My calendar is full. So things like that happen too. But as long as you figure out a system to follow up with them. So you put five um, past clients on your calendar every morning, you call them up and you say, hey, I don't know if you realize, but it's your three. Happy anniversary. How is the home treating you? Do you need any repairs? Uh, we have a preferred vendor list and I can send out to you. So also a preferred vendor list. It's an awesome way of generating business and it's an awesome way of supporting your friends that are supporting you. Um, so what that is, it's pretty much you reach out to your sphere of influence, the local people that you know that own some sort of a local business. You put them on your referring list, referral list. They also can give certain discounts to your clients that the clients would benefit from if they were to choose that. So now you have this list. If somebody is reaching out to you that, hey, do you know an awesome painter? You can say, yeah, yeah, here's the list, send it over. So now you're supporting your local businesses. So in return, they will support you because when they see referrals coming out from, you know, coming from you all the time, then they also feel like they owe you in a way, you know, so then they're going to send you their um, referral in, in return. So we, we also do that. But the one advice I got, and I wish I remember from who, but one of the best advices I ever got is don't ever eat alone. You're going to eat lunch. You're going to go to a coffee shop and grab coffee. Don't ever go alone, meaning invite somebody. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, don't always look at it as, as it like, oh, I need to get a leap today out of it. Look at it as you're just trying to truly stay in front of somebody, somebody that you didn't get a chance to talk to since high school, but you just heard that they, you know, live two, two streets down, down from you. And there's Facebook for that. Reach out to the people, get into the habit of sending a message every single day. And every Sunday you sit down and you say, okay, this week I need to have five lunches. Who am I going to have lunch with? And then that line, you fill your calendar on the Sunday, you send them a Facebook message, you send them a personal message and say, hey, I haven't seen you in so long. I would love to catch up. I would like to take you out for coffee. If, if you can't afford lunch, do coffee. Coffee is $3. Actually, I just learned today, did you know this? Pan Panera Bread, you can get um, endless coffee for a month for $9 at Panera Bread. Really? Yeah. There you go. I just saved you. Yeah, subscription-based. I like that. Yeah. That's take pretty cool. Take Panera Bread, sit down with a cup of coffee. It's going to cost you 9 bucks a month. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're building a relationship because this is the relationship business, right? Like I always tell people when they say what their goals are, I'm like, okay, well, we need to define how many people you need to talk to about real estate, right? Yep. And people want to do everything in the world to avoid the conversation. 
but you can't sell a home without talking to somebody. So it's like, get in front of them. Uh, there's an amazing book um, on my bookshelf here. Uh, Michael Mayer, 7L, seven levels of yeah, communication. If you want, if you have no clue about how to build a, um, a sphere of influence or just to build relationships with past clients, get the book. I bu I've saw Michael speak, never really looked into his system. Literally like four years after I saw him speak, I bought the book and I read it and I was like, holy shit, this book is amazing. If I had this 10 years ago, I would have had this kick-ass client follow-up system. So I, I love that. Never eat alone, obviously inviting people out. But that sheet you mentioned at the closing to gather that information is a game changer. Yeah. And you also, when you plug it into their system, so now you have their birthdays. So when you plug it into a system, the system, and, and please have a CRM program of some sort. I have Lion Desk and KB Core. The system will remind you for your client's birthdays. Even Facebook, you can use for that. Go into your Facebook, go into March and say, who in your database has a birthday in March? Then you're going to sit down on a Sunday this week and you say, okay, out of my Facebook friends, these people have birthdays. I haven't seen them. I'm going to take them out for coffee for their birthday. And then at that conversation, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, how is it going? How are the kids? How is life? How is work? Blah, blah, blah. Then in return, they're going to ask you, how is it going? You're going to remind them it's going amazing. Don't ever freaking complain. <laughs> and in Italy, that's not going to work. It's yeah. always going great. I don't asking you to lie, but people have their own problem. They really don't need to hear yours. Well, the challenge with that too, is if you come across like you're overwhelmed in business, they won't send you the referral because they don't want, they don't like seeing you in that state. So you mm -hmm. literally by your physiology and how you come across to people, you'll lose referrals because they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't want to send go, go another client. She already looks stressed out, right? Like, so you got to be aware of how you come across to people. That's super important. Yeah. And you're not there for a lead. Just get that all out of your head. You're there to build relationships and, and, and truly be a good friend. Just kind of spend some time with them. And then I guarantee you it works like clockwork. You leave that coffee meeting. Two days from there, you're going to get a text message. And she's going to say, oh, my gosh, I forgot to tell you. My aunt is moving here from Wisconsin. She needs a condo. She has three kids. Can you help her? Yep. And she's going to be like, I would love to. Yeah, because you know, we're in real estate. We think real estate 24 seven, our clients, they got life going on. So what happens is by simply having a cup of coffee and just talking about life, you know, their reticular activators now all of a sudden starting to think about real estate again, because they just met with you. And that's why you get that call in 24 to 48 hours because they're thinking real estate again. It's also why getting referrals while your clients are going through the real estate transaction is the best time. Don't wait till the end. Do it while you're going through because guess what? They're talking about their new home, the new purchase, everywhere they go with everybody they come in contact with. Yeah. And same with social media. Like this week, yesterday, I got one from a, an agent in Indiana asked me, hey, where are you exactly in Michigan? Because I have my cousin who wants to move to Arizona. She has to sell her home 30 some minutes from us. Got that listing. Then we got another one from a lender. It's like, hey, I'm pre-approving this buyer. He's in this area. How far is that from you? 40 some minutes. I'm like, yep, we'll take it. And so it, all from social media. It's like, if you, are, if you can do the shameless self-promotion locally, let everybody and their mother know what you do and where you do it, then they, they have an option to finding you. Yeah, you cannot be a secret realtor. <laughs> it doesn't work. And not if you want to be a successful one. Right. You could be, you could be secret and broke. But, but you've right. got to get out there. You've got to talk. So social media is your thing. So you mentioned a couple amazing things, guys, going in, finding out all the birthdays for the month. Huge nugget today. By the way, it'd be really cool if you took time and wrote a handwritten, you know, birthday note to all of those people. You know, handwritten notes are a touch that I think a lot of people don't realize. But showing up in their mailbox, um, it just can shows I, people. Can I give another idea too? Yeah. Okay, how about if you took a personalized selfie style video? And you use BombBomb? Bomb? No, just send no? it straight. Just your cell phone, send it straight to their Facebook. And say, hey, oh. just got to birthday on the 17th. I just wanted to take the time and wish you happy birthday. I also want to invite you out for coffee. Can you do it on whichever date I'm available? This day and this day, let me know, and I would love to take you out for a treat. That's awesome. Happy birthday. So you know what I did? And then maybe this is another nugget. Every client is in my phone. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I put an emoji at, after their name. So I know everybody with this emoji is a real estate client. So I could literally do exactly what you just said. And I use bomb bomb video cause it embeds video as a text, mm -hmm. uh, but it kind of, you know, it looks like a video it's playable. You don't have to worry about the size of the video. So it gets massive open consumptions and it tracks the, the open. So I know if somebody watched my video, 
you could do that exact strategy by text, right? So you could use different platforms and be social leveraging video on multiple platforms. I love that. Yeah. So what are, so obviously the birthdays are huge, sending the video individually to people on social media, posting about open houses, just the everyday, you know, hustle of being a realtor. For those people listening right now, if we wanted to help them say, leverage social media to start, first of all, let's give them a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. Just getting started doing your first post, you're not going to get clients. How much of a, of a time investment do you think somebody really needs to put in before they get some type of engagement or interaction back? So the way I look at it is social media is not for everybody, but I also knew going in, there's a long list of things that I'm not willing to do. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to call somebody and ask them for their business. I just can't do it. I'm certainly not begging the stranger to work with me. In my opinion, they're lucky if they get to work with me. So those things are not for me. So then I had to quickly figure out, okay, what is for me? Because I also need to make money and I have a very healthy set of ego that clearly is in the way. So how are we going to make money, Gogo? And that was social media for me. So if you decide to do social media, you have to look at it. It's your job. Just like if you were to cold call, you would do it every morning from 8 to 11, dusk or dawn or raining or snowing or whatever, you are doing it. Same thing with social media. If you decide to do social media, you have to make at least one post every single day. You have to hashtag your business. You have to tag the location. You have to tag the people you are with. So you're actually going to have to put some effort into it. You can't just throw a picture up there and a little blah, blah, blah. No hashtag, no tag location, no tag people. It's not going to work. So you have to look at it as it's your job. It is your cold calling. Because it is. You're kind of reaching strangers that don't know of your existence yet. Yeah, so if you take the right steps, you're going to be able to reach them. But you're going to have to put some effort into it. So I post about once or twice to my uh, feed every single day and I do about anywhere between 10 to 14 stories every single day. So the stories are those little snippets that people get to see into your life about 15 second age and they go poof after 24 hours. The feed is what is your storefront as I call it. Now your feed has to be pretty because that's when people when they're going to google you that's what they're going to see that's under forever unless you personally remove it. Now that has to be edited, that has to be pretty. That has to have you know content you actually have to give them something a reason to follow you your stories can be kind of anything because it goes poof and you just want to entertain them and kind of let them see the backstage of what it goes down on, on a day in your life so that i also have i didn't know how much you want to go into detail with ideas but i just did another podcast with things that are working in 2020 so I don't know how much time we have, but if you like, I can probably go through us some of them. Yeah, let's pick out your top three to five. Uh, the whole goal of our podcast is to give action items. Somebody listening to GoGo -Go can finish this podcast and say, I'm going to do those three things. I'm going to do them consistently, and I know how to do them, right? So yeah, go uh, ahead. Let's, let's do like a, a Tuesday giveaway. Okay, so every Tuesday, you, you're going to figure out how many weeks in a month, and then you're going to take a couple, couple you know, weeks off for summer vacation and this or that. But other than that, every Tuesday, you're going to do a giveaway. For that, you're going to go to your local businesses. So I recommend getting one month done in one day, which means you're going to need four to five, depending on how many Tuesdays are in a month, local businesses. Then you're going to take one day a month. You're going to go to the local business, and you're going to introduce yourself. You're going to say, hey, I'm a local realtor. I have social media following. I would like to generate some business to you and also some eyeballs to my business. So every Tuesday I do a giveaway. Is there anything that you can do to a local clientele that I'm going to generate to you? Is there any item that you can give away? Okay, then you're gonna do a giveaway. So let's say they give you a $100 gift basket, okay? It's a local bakery that you went into. Now you are bringing awareness to your local businesses. Now you're giving them something. There's a reason for them to follow you and then you're gonna give the terms of the giveaway. You're gonna take a photo of the uh, uh, of that uh, business owner. I strongly recommend don't just take a photo of the item. It's not going to work. You better be in it. The other business better be in it. People are attracted to people, not to things. Okay, people do business with people, not because you know the name on the door. So you're gonna take that photo, then you're gonna give the terms to the giveaway. You're gonna say, hey guys, you, it's Tuesday now, so you have until Sunday. This is how you're gonna partake in this giveaway. I need you to tag three friends. I need you to follow my page and the local bakery's page. And then on Sunday, I'm going to draw somebody who's, who tagged, who met all of the requirements. So then on Sunday, you're going to go live. You're going to go through your feed and you're going to stop on one and say the winner is Jessica Smith. 
Now you're going to reach out to Jessica Smith. You tell, announce that she's the winner. And then you're going to meet with Jessica in person. You're going to take another photo with Jessica when she's receiving her gift, gift basket. You're going to tag the other business. You're going to tag Jessica. You're going to tag yourself. You're going to tag the location. Now everybody in that location is going to see not only that you promoted a local business, but you actually followed through and you gave that gift away. Because there's a lot of fake giveaways out there and people just won't participate. But this is an awesome way of growing your local audience because they have to follow you. They have to follow the other business. So now not only you gain their friends, but you're also going to gain the other business current followers because they're also going to post your, your giveaway. So now you are supporting each other. And the, everybody that I know needs a roof above their head. So I look at everyone as a potential customer. Even if they have to rent, you know, in two years, they're going to have to buy. Max, two mm -hmm. years. So that's, that's an, an awesome option. strategy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and it's helping local, um, your, your local economy. Um, I would, the lives are good if you want to go live at your open houses, especially if you're having a, a boring open house, then it's not happening. Why aren't you live? Why aren't you letting the world know that this home is existing just because they haven't happened to see the open house for the weekend? Um, you always tag location. So in case you don't know what that means, when you're posting something, you want to tag the location because our businesses are localized. Now, I'm not saying I post in, you know, stuff from San Francisco and New York because you can also get what's called a referral fee. So if I get a New York lead, yes, I don't hold a license in New York, but I have team members in New York. Or if I don't know anyone, then I can refer it to someone that I don't know for a referral fee. You know what I mean? So it's tagging location is really important because there's many ways us realtors can make money in real estate. Tagging people. Always take the people that you are with because now you're gaining their followers' eyeballs. Because their followers might not know of your existence, but because you tag them, now they're going to share it. When they share it, you gained all of their followers. They potentially will come over and follow you as well. Um, That's huge, right? Because what pe people think when they post on Facebook, if you got 3,000 friends, all 3,000 see what you're talking about. And that's not the truth, right? The Facebook algorithm, it's, I forget, I used to know the exact percentage, but it's like 1%. It's, yeah, less than 2%. Yeah, of your it's ridiculous. Your post. So you got 3,000 people, 30 people are seeing what you posted. Yeah. But by tagging somebody, you're now getting their insights and their followers to see. So you mentioned tagging, you mentioned location, and you mentioned hashtags a bunch of times today. So are those kind of like the three secret weapons to start to grow organically your social media yeah. posts? Yeah, hashtags are very important. Hashtags are like search words. If you were to go on Google and search for something, what would you search for? And now remove the space in between the words and put a hashtag in front of it, and that's your hashtag. So I always hashtag my own brand. I hashtag GoGo, GoGo Go, Go Betkey, GoGo's Real Estate, GoGo's Bootcamp, uh, Homes, Homes for Sale, Brighton, Brighton, Michigan, Michigan, Michigan Homes for Sale. Michigan Realtor, Realtor, Realtors, Real Estate, Realtor Ring, Realtor Life. <laughs> yeah, so, so you've got your list. Let me ask you this because uh, I've heard it from a couple of different people. Do you post your hashtags in your original post or do you do a comment with the hashtags? Original post. Original post. Yeah, I see people do that in the comments. I don't think it works, guys. Um, you know, why to break a system that's working. I always been posting into the actual post. Now, granted, sometimes I blend it in. So I put a hashtag right in front of the word in the blah, 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 as I'm typing it up. And sometimes I do dot, 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 like I do five spaces. And then underneath, I put like the, the hashtags and you can go up to 30 hashtags. Um, don't use it and abuse it. The less you can use, the more potent it is. And also uh, Instagram and Facebook now has image recognition. So if you are hashtagging yourself on the beach, but you are tagging, I don't know, Brighton, Michigan, it's not going to work because they, mm, they, are, they have small imaging. So you always have to hashtag what's in the image. Mm, good insight there. Okay. So those are a couple, any other, you know, one or two more that you think are really uh, working 2020? Video reviews. So reviews are important to start with. If you don't have a Google My Business, get one. Um, get reviews on all of these platforms, the Zillow, the Realtor.com, your Facebook page, and your um, Google My Business. But video reviews are even better. So and when you are at the closing table and the, your clients are the happiest than they could ever be, uh, you're going to take a selfie style video and you say, oh, guys, we just closed them one, two, three Main Street. Well, actually, don't say that. I don't disclose the address of the property. Sorry. Bad example. Do not do that. <laughs> 
you don't want to disclose the address of the property. I usually do that if I'm in an open house. Hey guys, I'm in an open house at one two three Main Street. It's just a habit of saying it. Uh, you are at a closing. You say, hey, we just closed on this awesome new construction in Howell, Michigan. My clients are so excited. We are at the closing table, and they will tell you all about how the transaction went. And I hope to be, and I hope to have the opportunity to work with you as well. And then you take the camera over. Your clients tell them how how much they love working with you, what they love the most, and then try to keep that under one minute so you can post it. And that's it. Video works the best, guys. And it comes straight from the consumer versus you just sharing a blah, 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 or you telling what your client said. Yeah, that's huge. So what, video, you could post it on a story. You could post it on your wall. You could do Instagram. You could do Facebook. Yeah, you, you can put it on your YouTube. You can put it into your email signature, your YouTube link. You can, I mean, there's so many different things. Yeah. You, can, you can turn it into an ad. You can boost it, like all that stuff. Yeah, you could have it transcribed. So now that it's written, you could have just the audio, right? Because you never know what your business is going to look like next year. Let's say you're 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 a rock star and you're just looking for another pillar, and you're like, I'm going to do radio. Well, radio they can't use the video, but they could use the audio. Yeah. So that's why video video is home run. If you're not leveraging video for testimonials and client feedback, uh, you're missing a huge opportunity. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any a last one that you think um, everybody absolutely needs to be looking at at 2020? VAs. Virtual assistants, I think it's a it's a huge one um, because you, you know we are talking about money making activities and all of these things are very important, um, but they are nurturing the client. They are not a an instant commission. Yeah, you know I mean, so like going back and taking them out for you know just setting up the the simple thing of setting up the appointment. Like that's going to take 10, 15 minutes of your time. If you took that ten and fifteen minutes and now you went and sold the house, how much are we talking in that ten, fifteen mm -hmm. minutes of profit? So the little things you should remove from your plate, even though they have to get done, you should stay in touch with these people. You should have your favorites list filled out, but maybe you shouldn't be the one making the call. You know, so the VAs, if you can get a two, three, four, five, eight dollars an hour VA, that can, and then you can train them to get all these steps done. So all the, the systematized steps that even though they have to get done, but it's not the best um, time spent for the return on your investment should be hired out on a virtual assistant. I love that. Now you just hit on something and we'll wrap it up here. I want to be respectful of your time today. Um, social media, the social media game is not instant gratification. And I think that's important for realtors to hear. This is a long term. This is a brand building. This is brand awareness. Now, when you hit the tipping point, life is good because it's all inbound. You're not competing. You're not reducing your fees. That all goes away. So speak on that because I think that's critical for people to understand. If you just go post for the next six months, we're not saying you're going to sell 100 homes this year. This is going to be a commitment over time, correct? Yes. There isn't such a thing as overnight success. Like, yes, I'm the social media queen, but I, I got my license in 2011. I have made over 14,000 posts. Yeah, you're, an, you're a nine-year overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> it only took nine years and it's overnight success, yeah. yeah. So it's just like anything else. It, is, uh, it takes time to grow. It takes time for you to um, figure out the systems and, and, and evolve with it. And, you know, and, and the 10 followers turn into 10,000, the 10,000 turns into 50,000. It takes time. Unless you can come up with that instant viral video, but the chance of that is less than 1% of, I don't even know if, if it's that high. Uh, of the population. So if you want to do it organically and, and, and want to see the growth, it's going to take time just like anything else to build your database, to build your systems, to have, you know, everything in place. Yeah. But the advantage is, cause I always usually ask people, Hey, what are the two or three skills you really need to excel in real estate? And we hear things like you got to be great on the phone presentations, but when you attract inbound, that's a whole different that's a whole different beast, right? I never right? had a listing presentation. I never had a listing because presentation. Because you're not having to compete. People are because coming. I have to sell my services. They already know they, they want to see me. So like my Saturday appointment, I said yesterday at 8.30 at night, I said, are you available Saturday at 11? And she's like, are you bringing docs? I said, yeah. <laughs> it's a different business, guys. That's why video, building your brand, starting to attract, it's a game changer. It doesn't happen overnight. But if this is... If, if you are running your track of business, maybe you've got some now business pillars. If this is not bolted to your business, you are giving up so much future wealth. You're going to be the hustler on the treadmill forever. If you not don't only that, we are talking the biggest bulk of uh, future consumers going to be the millennial. The millennial does not want to freaking talk to you and they don't want to make eye contact. Okay. They don't want to hold a phone conversation. They're not even going to answer your call when you cold call them. So if you don't exist on Google, 
But if you don't exist on social media for the millennial, you don't exist, period. You're going to be a dinosaur in a few years. Instinct. Not instinct. And what is the word? And gone. Like, not with <laughs> You said instinct and you made me go blank. <laughs> what is it? Not instinct. It's that instinct. is terrific. I can't think you, of the word. You literally made me go blank when you said Absolutely, but there's another word for it that sounds like instinct, but it's not instinct. It's gone. Okay. Gone. How about that one? You will be gone. gone. You will be gone. You won't exist. That's you literally made me go blank. That was the that is hilarious. I'm gonna have it's gonna come to me in a couple. Yeah. I'm gonna message you. I love that. Cool. So last thing for those folks listening around, what's the best way to follow you, get in touch with you, hear more about what you're doing? So GoGo's Real Estate on anywhere or GoGoBetki anywhere. GoGoBetki.com. You can see all of the events that I'm uh, speaking at. You can see everything that I do. That is GoGoBetki.com. Now, if you want to learn more about social media, um, the bootcamp that I came out with, that pretty much teaches you all the way from the basics, all the way up through all of the different things that you need to do. So the basics of social media, how to set up all of your platforms and accounts. Then we go into buy site strategies, listing site strategies, open house strategies, how to build a team, when to hire an assistant, how to pay your assistant, all of the systems, all of the vendors, all everybody that I use through the years, how to make six digits, multiple six digits, passive income, all that and everything in between is included. We also have a Facebook group where once a month I teach a live class and then we hold you through it. You'll have homework, you have a month to get it done. So I look at it as it's like your social media house that we are building. We're starting with the foundation and every month we add on until we make sure that you have everything that I have so you can function properly in the social media world. That one is called GoGo's Bootcamp. Um, you can buy it all at once and you get lifetime access forever. Or if you can afford it all up front, then uh, there's four monthly payments as well. You can find that on gogosbootcamp.com. We are also coming out with the done for you service here soon, uh, which you will still get access to the Gogos Bootcamp and all of the organic side of it. Also, all of the how to run ads. So my digital marketer, Sammy, he has his own course that's part of Gogos Bootcamp. He teaches you how to do it with ads. Now, awesome. I never run an ad myself, personally. My husband is going through that same bootcamp himself because he wants to learn it, even though we have Sammy, he's my digital marketer. But that course is also part of it. So not only you can learn how to do it organically, you can learn how to do it if you were to throw five, ten bucks at it a day and then reach strangers that you can't reach organically on your own. And the done for you service is going to include all that. Plus, we will do it for you, meaning we'll set up all of those accounts. We'll do everything for you. All you need to do is post. That is awesome. Thank you so much. So go, go boot camp, guys. Go check it out. Don't go become go. extinct. <laughs> Don't instant. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> extinct. Extinct. That's yeah. <laughs> extinct. Oh gosh, that's a level of English I speak. You, yeah. I, know, I know the rhythm of the word. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you knew what you were trying to say. It didn't matter how it came out. I don't really need to translate for me. Yeah, I love it. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, we definitely went deep into social media. There were a ton of nuggets that everybody can pull out of this episode and this show. So, go go. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and sharing what's working now. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dominant Agent Podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please be sure to leave a comment and review on whatever platform you're listening on so that we can continue to bring you the very best guests 